Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Wednesday, May 29, 2024. I hope you are in good spirit this morning and I hope that you had a good night's rest. And as you take on this day, take it on with Jesus. Ask him to go before you to fly the chops and the snare of the enemy because only God alone can protect us. Only God alone can keep us from all the elements that are out there seeking to harm us. So I pray that we will put our lives in his hand and I pray for you this morning that he will cover you and that he will continue to bless and keep you. Our reading today comes to us from Ecclesiastes chapter 1, reading from verse 12 to 18. And it says, I the preacher was king over Israel in Jerusalem, and I gave my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This sore travail had God given to the sons of men to be exercised therewith. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. That which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. I communed with my own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate, and I have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge, and I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceive that this also is vexation of spirit. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Amen. What a word this morning. We are thankful for the reading of God's word, which is always here to remind us that we need God. And if left to ourselves, we will surely perish in our sins. And so Solomon's life is a very interesting life and a very good object lesson for all of us. Because sometimes we approach life as if it is the only thing that matters. What do I mean by that? The way in which we approach our careers, the way in which we, we seek to get riches, the way in which we seek to gain status, the way we seem to compact our lives with all the things of this world. But what I love about Solomon is that he had all of these things to his disposal and the conclusion that he came to was that this is madness this is vanity so what do we know about solomon we know that solomon was the son of david and the son of who Bathsheba, and he was the one that took over from his father david and i remember reading where when solomon was um made king he and God was having a conversation and God asked him, what it is that you want from me? What is it that you would like me to give to you? And he said that he wanted wisdom and God gave him that. You know, many folks would have probably asked for riches because the truth is that even when we are praying, most of the time when we pray, the things that we ask for from God are material things. How many of us pray? and ask God for a closer walk. How many of us, when we are praying, we ask God to give us wisdom to make right choices? How many of us pray and ask God to protect our families? How many of us pray and ask God to teach us what is right from what is wrong? The numbers are few. Most prayer that is prayed, the first thing that we ask God for, and sometimes the only thing that we ask God for, are material things things that gratify self that glorify self and here we see where Solomon he had the opportunity to ask for that but instead he said Lord give me wisdom wisdom so that I can do what is pleasing in your sight so that I can be a good king and I had to applaud that and I know that decision was guided by the influence of the Holy Spirit and that is what we need we need to allow ourselves to be guided by the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit is speaking to us and trying to 
influence us in the right direction we need to listen we need to listen so he is a good example to use as an object lesson so he search out all the world to gain more knowledge and more knowledge and to know everything because he wanted to be so compact and so informed about things that he never stopped trying to acquire knowledge and that is something else that we need to bear in mind knowledge is something that you have to keep building on you must be constantly building on that so it's not something that is going to just drop in your lap so yes god will start the process but there's a work that you and i have to do it's just like faith you understand what i'm saying we ask for faith but then there's a process to help us garner or to gain that faith and so solomon he said that what i have seen all the works that are being done under the sun and my conclusion to all of this is that it is a vexation of spirit it will only make you angry and why because what man is constantly trying to gratify self and they disregard god and because they leave god out of the picture and there's no room for him the evil that exists in this world is filling that that void and so instead of doing what is right and pleasing in the sight of god we are constantly moving towards a destructive path and so he said that thing are those things that are already crooked can't be made straight have you ever seen a tree that has grown crooked can can you bend that tree to grow straight after it has gone crooked certainly not but the good news for you and me is that we still have a chance we are still growing and so while we are still growing and can be curved or straightened to the path that we are to grow the, to do what is right and pleasing in god's sight we need to do that we need to allow the spirit to help us to set us straight and so after he sit down and think about everything i mean solomon he was born into riches he had money he was a million a billionaire possibly a trillionaire he was the richest king in israel richest king he had money he had women solomon is the only man on the planet who had so many women hmm? 600 plus another 300 huh every time i think about that i'm like my word how is it that he managed that as much as a lot of those union they were to build alliances that's still a lot of women and with all of those women he was still oblivious and men today should take something from that that what you don't need all these barrage of women around you all you need is to find one woman and to be faithful to her that's the proper way so having a lot of women or having a lot of men it doesn't make you king or queen it's only proving the foolish state of man you are just setting yourself on a destructive course by doing so word for thought and so his experience taught him that everything that you gain in this life and everything that you will acquire if god is not the center of your achievement and if god is not first and foremost in your life then you are going to be one of the most miserable and unhappy person on the planet and even today we can see examples of that so many rich people they have money and wealth to they can buy all that their hearts desire that money can buy and they are among some of the most unhappy people in the world things cannot make you happy and that is why i encourage my young friends and all those who are seeking life partners do not build your hope and your aspiration and your relationship on material things these are those things that you need to get by in this life but you need substance for your relationship and so don't try to buy your way into other people's heart because it is only gonna bring you hurt 
and pain and sorrow. I'm telling you, it is a very serious thing. So God must be the center. And so if we want to escape the insanity that these things will cause us, let us, as the word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then God in his wisdom will bless us accordingly. Because when God is in the mix, you won't allow the things in this life to take center stage. Yes, you have your career, but, but you understand that it's just a career. Yes, you have your house, but you understand that it's just a house. Yes, you have your money, but you understand that it's just money. And you keep that in the front of your mind to remind you that, look here, this is just things and this is not what my life is is about my life should be about god and god only and so let us look to god let us ask him for wisdom let us make choices that will make us happy and the choice that will make us happy is a choice for god and then god will bless us because that's his promise to us he promised to bless you so i encourage you this morning trust god to take care of you while you see to to, to achieve go with God don't run before him but trust him don't put your houses and your cars and anything that you possess or the things of this world above God and once you do that once you make God the center of your life you will see a world of different you will have a different experience than you could never have had if you had make, made a different choice Amen. God bless you and take care.